Welcome back. Well, you know, our community is struggling to understand the tragic shooting there in Claremont County, where police say a father shot and killed his three sons. The victims were only three years old, four years old and seven years old. They're trying to explain this tragedy or have conversations with loved ones in situations like this really is unfathomable. Uh, right now, I'm joined by Dr. Dan Nelson from Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the National Center uh, for School uh, Crisis and Bereavement. Thanks so much for being here with us, Dr. Nelson and you and I were talking about this in our lines of work. We see this often, but that never makes it normal or OK. And you have parents in this community. What are signs that parents should look out for, I guess, when it comes to behavioral changes and how do grief counselors talk about this type of thing and tragedies with their children? Um, well, thank you for inviting me here, Ashley. Um, you know, normally when there's a big shift in a child's behavior, you can tell they may be distressed. Um, and I would say any child who's actually watching this information on television mm -hmm. and learning about it may begin to show signs of concern. Um, probably the most important things for parents to remember initially is listen. Mm -hmm. Let your children kind of explain to you what their, what their concerns are, what's troubling them about the information. Um, and it may be a direct byproduct of on some level, children look to their parents to protect them. Mm -hmm. And in this story, the father is presumed to be the person who did this terrible act against young children. So young children then might have safety concerns. Mm -hmm. And so to explain mm -hmm. to them, uh, we're here to keep you safe. This would not happen in our home. Um, see what they're asking about, what, what information they might have. It might be distorted, so sometimes you want to say what you do yeah. know that's actual, mm -hmm. but, but also what are their fears and concerns. And it may be that some children will regress a little bit. They may want to have parents, you know, talk to them around bedtime, do some routines that came earlier in their development to yeah. reassure them. Dr. Nelson, obviously a story like this really touches everyone from parents to children. If their children are watching the news or hear about this tragedy or even know the children who were involved. And I know as a, as a child, you look to your parents as like your hero. You never, you see them as strong. My mom was my safe place growing yeah. up. And, but when you see your parents break down or cry, or maybe they even try to hide it, how can you help parents explain that they also feel emotions and are sad and sometimes fearful? Um, well, I think when parents are experiencing an authentic emotion and, and it's revealed to the child, it's okay to say, I'm feeling sad or I'm mm -hmm. feeling scared or even angry. Um, but to, to kind of explain the context of that and what's going to come from that feeling. So uh, I think it takes courage to show your real feelings. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay to explain to kids, you know, when I'm sad that I cry and I can share my sadness with you, it makes us both stronger. I think that's a reasonable message. It's a message that they can also reflect on their own experience so that they can then share their feelings, fear, anger, sadness, if we think of those as kind of negative emotions. Children are trying to understand mm -hmm. those feelings and what to do with them. So it's also important for the parent or the, the person who's guiding this child to kind of say, here's what I want to do with this feeling to make it mm. constructive or healthy. Yeah, we know New Richmond schools in that area where at least one of the children went, had grief counselors on, on ha hand today. How do grief counsel counselors talk to children about these types of tragedies? Well, I think in some ways they lead with listening. Uh, that's been my experience in working with them. and. Uh, there's several agencies here in the uh, tri-state area, mm -hmm. Companions on a Journey, Mind Peace, Cincinnati Children's, there's other agencies. And they reach out and first kind of coordinate support, listen to the children, and then it's important to give like factual information, uh, but not, I wouldn't take the child too far away from their own concerns. That's, that's where they're asking the questions, that's where they're needing. Uh, information to kind of calm themselves. Mm -hmm. Now the closer the person is to the event, people who know this family are going to be much more impacted mm -hmm. and that's where even professional help may be needed. And how often should we talk to children after a tragedy, whether they're close to the tragedy or maybe viewing it from an outside view, how often should we talk to them about it and how they're feeling without maybe bringing up those feelings of trauma and fear and kind of re-injuring the wound? So um, 
that can um, relate to several things. One can be how much exposure they have to the mm -hmm. information. But another can be how much of this is happening in their own lives. Mm -hmm. So for instance, children who are going through a divorce or another loss, maybe a grandparent has died or even a pet has died, the impact of this kind of information about the tragedy and the loss of life, it can feel very personal to them because they're personally experiencing a different kind of loss, but it's a trauma trigger potentially. Mm -hmm. So those are children I would think might need added support. It's really okay to ask people when they need uh, support or if they're struggling or you know what are your thoughts or feelings about what's going on with this story for you mm -hmm. and, and let them lead I think it's important to stay away from kind of interrogating a kid too much you know we can we can want to ask a lot of questions that we feel like we need the answers to mm. about what they're feeling or what they should feel or what they're going to do with things but it's probably better to follow their lead mm -hmm. Dr. Nelson, thanks so much for your information Thank and you. thanks for being Actually. here with us as well. And of course, if you need help or just want to see more resources about how you can help your loved ones, especially children during crises like these, uh, you can go to the, our, the website on your screen right now. We'll also have this information on our website, wlwt.com. All right, Allison, let's.